We're here to talk about Silicon Valley real estate market, the week ending November 30th. Here are the chapters that we're going to be going over in a brief description of them. Most of you are repeat viewers. This is, helps you jump to the point of the presentation that you find most interesting to you. And the timestamp is down below. I have to start off with the timestamp, so I'll put the number one towards the end of the line. I'm Richard Calhoun, real estate broker with Creekside Realty. Let's get into the data. Here is the thumbnail sketch of the key indicators. You can see that the inventory has been below the gray line, which is a normal line based on the previous 10-year median. The red line is the hottest you'd expect the market to be, so which would be the sh a shortage of inventory. And you can see that, you know, basically we started the quarter at 81% of normal inventory. We're ending the quarter at 80%. Basically no change relative to normal. The indicators get a little closer together, but you can see that you're vertically separated downwards towards the hot marketplace, which is limited number of inventory. Same concept with all of them. The next one we look at is the number of offers that have been accepted in the past five weeks. I look at the number of offers, not the pending transactions. And pending transactions has the danger of transaction that's in escrow for a long period of time impacts the data for longer than a all cash transaction that closes in a week. But what I look at is the offers either in still in escrow or have closed that have initiated in the past five weeks. So every transaction impacts the statistics the same. Here you can see that there's been a shortage of offers, which means lack of transactions. We started off the quarter 14 weeks ago. And the reason I use 14 weeks is I like the, the last week of the previous quarter. And this is basically the last week of the current quarter. So you have quarter over quarter comparisons. You can see that you're basically at 75% of the normal of offers. Now you're at 79. So the offers have come up. You can see the crossover here about nine weeks ago, where you went from below the least number of offers you expect to above. But again, the normal line is the gray line. So you can see the vertical separation between the gray and the current purple line as being the shortage of number of transactions. DUI is the seller buyer balance, the supply demand balance. And you can see because the both the inventory and offers are in limited supply, the balance is right at 100%. We started off at 99%, we're at 94%. You can see the, the vertical separation, but you can also see there's a fair amount of bounce in each one of these graphs from week to week, even though I use a five week moving measuring period. Days on market for three quarters of the sellers to sell is simply, you know, how long is it taking 75% of the sellers to get the offer in? Not to close the transaction, but to get the offer in the door after they go on the market. We started off at 26 days, which is 10% longer than normal. We're now at 8% longer than normal, but we're at 36 days and that's because it normally increases. You can also see the increase this last week. Keep in mind that every holiday except Mother's Day and Valentine's Day negatively impacts the real estate marketplace and Thanksgiving is a fairly significant holiday and it's one of the holidays that moves by a full week. It can be as early as the 22nd of November and as late as the 28th of November like it was this year. That could explain why the data went up so dramatically this last week is, you know, we had the holiday and the holiday would normally be impacting the 10 year median on different dates. And this is a date to date comparison. But anyway, you can see that we're still taking a little bit longer, but 36 days for three out of four sellers to sell is not bad. And it's only 8% longer than normal. Price reductions. This is how much the seller reduces their own asking price before they get the offer in the door. You can see we started off the quarter basically a 1% reduction, which doesn't sound like a large amount. And the reason it's such a small amount is the vast majority of the sellers, somewhere around 85% of the sellers, do not do any price reductions at all. They've done their homework before they put their house on the market. They're not on the market long enough because they priced it well and they don't do any price reductions but that's 27% higher than it normally is. So you can see that it would normally be lower. Now it's only 6% higher, even though the amount of the decrease is higher, it's now at 1.1%. So you're taking an extra 10th of a percent increase in price reductions on the magnitude. But you can see that that's pretty close to normal at 6%. And you can see it's a little bit below the gray line. The gray line's right about there. The purple line's right about here. That indicates that the market's taking a little bit more price reductions. And again, you can see there's been a little bit of fluctuation, but this is one of the more stable data points for whatever reason. Overbidding, this is an indication of how much buyers feel competitiveness in the offers because it's 
the magnitude that they're overbidding. Typically, a quarter ago, they overbid by 5%, and a quarter ago, they were actually overbidding by 5.7%. Now, they typically overbid by 4.1%, and they're at that same essential 5.6%. So you can see you're now significantly above the typical overbidding. So buyers in Silicon Valley, which is San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, and Alameda County, are feeling more competitiveness in the offers and are being more aggressive in their offering prices. Here now it takes you back to 2014. The first nine years is on a compressed scale all the way through 2023. And then one year of the expanded scale and a set, the current year also on that expanded scale. The expanded scale allows, and that's the time scale that's expanded, it allows you to see changes more easily than the condensed sale and I like to have the 10 year that I'm using for the median on here. So basically from 2014 through 2023 are my 10 years that I use for my 10 year median. And then I'm comparing the current year, 2024 to that previous 10 year median. Here, you're just looking at the numbers and you can see that you're down here now at something like, what would that be about 95%? And this is on DUI. So the speed of the market is a little bit faster than normal. And the big change here is this huge drop off in inventory. You'd expect that for the holidays, probably up a little bit last week, higher than it should have been because of the moving Thanksgiving holiday. So we had more inventory since we were a week away from Thanksgiving instead of Thanksgiving weekend. And now we caught up. So the trend was probably just sort of rolling over. And looking at the number of offers accepted, you can see it's been recently right about 80%. That is up quite a bit from the 75% it was at for a good portion of third quarter, but it's also significantly up from the 70% it was during basically the end of first quarter and the beginning of second quarter. So you can see the general trend for the number of offers has been in the upwards direction, and it's been upwards basically since about mid-2023. So we've had a slow year and a half of climb of the number of offers, but we're still way below. And, you know, someone could argue, you know, 70% to 80% really isn't a climb. It's almost more of a drift. And I wouldn't argue with that. So now we're looking at each metric and we're comparing the gray line, the 10-year median. This is the most inventory you'd expect. And then I define that as to be the 90 percentile mark. This is the least inventory you'd expect, which I define as the 10 percentile. The median, of course, is the 50 percentile. You can see the purple line is basically now right on top of the red line. So we've been having a shortage of inventory, especially here in 2023 into the first part of 2024. Then we gained inventory, never back all the way up to the level we were. But now with the holiday crunch, we've come down and we're, again, basically have a, a significant shortage of inventory. Here you can see the improvement in the level of inventory, and now recently the reduction, we're back down to that 80% of the inventory you'd expect to have, and that would be for this time of the year. This now is doing the same thing with the number of offers. Here, a low number of offers is a cool marketplace, which is why the blue line is on the bottom. I try to exclusively use blue for a cool marketplace, red for a hot marketplace, the gray for the median, and the purple for the data. Again, here you can see that your number of offers is on the low side, but pretty much following the normal pattern. You can see there was a fairly significant perturbation from what normally happens in third quarter, but for the most part, it's been following the normal pattern. Here you can see the percent of normal. So there's been a slight climb. Again, you've gone from basically that 70 percentile level. You've had a lot of fluctuations of almost 10%, but what I would argue is 2023 was basically flat at 70% of the number of transactions. 2024 started off flat, but basically starting here at the beginning of second quarter, there's been a climb in the number of offers compared to normal, and we're now at 80%. So we're still missing 20% of the marketplace, but at least it's improving. Here's the speed of the marketplace. You can see that this line's been traced of the purple line, which is the data line, has been basically following the trends of the gray line. And holidays, this is your negative impact of probably July 4th. And you can see the impact's more severe in the current year because dates aren't moving around at all. Now, July 4th is a holiday that doesn't move around, but some days like Memorial Day does move and Thanksgiving moves, as I've already said, Labor Day moves, and most of our holidays move a, a full week because of Monday holidays, and Thanksgiving moves a full week because it's always on Thursday. 
So here you can see we've been falling down. Now we're a little bit lower than normal, but I would say that's pretty much where you'd expect it to be. I would expect to see an increase in inventory next week without a corresponding increase in offers. And that would turn around and cause this number to go back up. So I think we're going to be following the pattern of the gray line and going back up next week. And then we'll probably go down the week after that, but time will tell. Here is compared to normal, and you can see that the last couple of weeks we've been bouncing, but we're basically at 100% of normal. So the speed of the marketplace is about normal. And this would be almost the competitiveness, the turnover rate. You have two measures of time of the marketplace. One is the next slide we'll be looking at, the 75 percentile marketing time. And this one is simply the turnover rate. And the turnover rate includes the transactions that are on the marketplace that don't sell because they're active inventory where the marketing time only includes those that actually sell. So here is the marketing time. You can see marketing time has been increasing and most noticeably it increased fairly significantly this last week. And it's now at one of the longest marketing times you, you've seen. And this is for all the Silicon Valley. And you can see it's about 36 days. I think Santa Clara County, if I remember the number was 30 days. So Santa Clara County is faster than the other two counties. Here's the normal. So Silicon Valley is basically right at the normal speed of the marketplace. It was a little bit longer in that second, third quarter time frame, basically midway from second quarter, which would be somewhere around August 15th through about October 15th. It was quite a bit slower and then it packed, uh, came back to normal. Here's the largest 10%. And this is a metric I like to follow. You know, in statistics, you normally don't look at your extremes on your marketplace. This is looking at the extreme, and the reason I'm doing that is I maintain that something like 85% of the sellers are a big flat zero. So I'm ignoring the 85%, and because sometimes you have a hot marketplace, that number gets down to around 7%. So I pick 10%, and I'm only looking at the sellers that are taking the largest price reductions. I'm looking at the 10% of those sellers and then plotting out what they normally do. So they Normally, it'd be doing a price reduction of about 12 and 12% 12 here because they take at 88% of their asking price. And now they're taking about a 14% price reduction this year. So a little bit more price reductions on the seller than normal for those that are taking price reductions. And here you can see that's been par fairly much the case basically all the way back here to mid of 2022. So once we had the slowdown that started early in 2022, we had a huge increase in the number of sellers of reductions. And then ever since then, we've been taking more price reductions than normal. Again, normal would be right here on the gray line at 100%, and we're somewhere around 115% of the normal price reductions. And that, again, is for the 10% of the sellers that are taking the largest price reductions. Now, just to show that I'm not playing with the data, here is the more typical average seller's ask price reduction. So the average Ask price reduction is basically coming in here just about 1.1% of a price reduction. That's why I don't follow it, but you can still plot the data. It's just a lot more tight. You can see even in a hot marketplace, sellers take small price reductions. Typical is on the gray line and in a cool marketplace or way down here on the blue line. And you can see that the purple line, the data line is sometimes below the blue line and sometimes above the red line. Here's the sellers price reductions versus typical. And you can see that we were taking greater price reductions than normal, somewhere about 1.2% maybe. Now we got up to 1% and maybe now we're at 0.9% for all three counties. Here's the frequency of those price reductions. And right now you can see that we're about 18% of the sellers are doing price reductions. And you can see that the purple line more often than not is below 20%. And a lot of times it's below 15%. And I'm selected that 10% line. So it's almost always that 10% of the sellers are doing a price reduction. That was sort of what en entered me. I didn't want to have a lot of zeros stabilizing the data. But again, you can see that following the normal pattern for the most part, and currently a, a little less than normal price reductions because your red's down here. So this is the frequency. This would be only 10% of the sellers that are doing price reductions. And as I said already, it's about 18% currently. Here's the frequency of those price reductions. And so you can see that compared to normal, so we're a little bit less than normal price reductions. We're about 87%. We're having only 87% of the sellers do price reductions compared to normal. 
Here's the median magnitude of overbidding. This is what the buyers do. So you can see they're coming in at about two and three quarter percent overbid. And that's the median, the midpoint. The average is the number I was showing in the first summary slide, which I think was 5.4% or something like that. So you can see the average is quite a bit higher, just like the average sale price is higher than the median sale price. But you can see that the overbidding is normally down here at something approaching 1%. So you can see that the median overbidding is higher than it typically is, just like the average. Here is compared to your normal. So I believe this is the percent above normal. So we're 1.8%, 1.3 percent above the normal amount of overbidding. So if the normal overbidding was 3%, 1.1 1 and a quarter, one and three quarters over that would be four and three quarters. Here's the frequency of overbidding. You can see we're having more frequent overbidding. So buyers are feeling a little bit more competitive in nature. We're right now where we're coming in at about 65%, uh, 64% it looks like. Uh, the sellers are getting oh, more than their asking price. Typically would be down here around 60%. So 4% more of the sellers are getting overbid. And that's not the magnitude, that's just the frequency. And here's the frequency stretched out. So you can see that you're up around 8% more of the sellers are getting overbid than typical. Here's the long-term appreciation as shown by the blue sloped line. And you can see the pattern, this upside down U every year. And then at the end of the year that we're getting to now, you tend to have the V. We did have a more significant drop off earlier this year. So it's gonna be real interesting to see if we go into a, a secondary V or if we've already done the price correction and we'll just follow up this blue line until early in first quarter where we will then shoot over. Keep in mind that this is sold price, which requires escrows to close, which means there's a lagging indicator. So when you see the bottom of the marketplace, you know, sometime in January of the next year, the market actually is peaking out in basically right at the first year and potentially even in the end of the year. What I believe actually happens, it's the very first week in January where the market takes off, some of the buyers want to be aggressive and they go in with quick closes, which gives us that data more rapidly for those transactions and it pulls the price up. Here's the payments. This is assuming an 80% 30-year fix using the national average. I do add in an estimate for homeowners insurance and for property tax. Now we're moving on to distributions. What this is doing is we're starting off a year ago on November 29, 2023. We're jumping either four or five weeks at a time, trying to keep the date of the month as close to the 29th as I can, and then plotting out each transaction that occurred during that five-week period of time. And that's the five-week period of time adding ending in the week of November 29th. So we're going back nine, November 29th, basically back to about October 25th, if I was to guess about right. So what you're seeing is a year ago, the market was hotter than it is now, and this is marketing time, but basically from 50% of the sellers, they're taking the same rate, but they really don't count because that's the sellers that are coming on the market priced aggressively, get, expecting offers after the first or second weekend. That's why I follow this 75 percentile up here and considering moving it up to about the 80 percentile to have more realisticness of what the market's doing. But you can see the market on the purple line, the current line is cooler, taking longer for those 75% of the sellers to get their offer. But the real takeaway is, as we step through this, you'll see that it cools off and then it turns around and accelerates and then it cools off and it spends a fair amount of time at the summer levels, whatever those levels tend to be. So let's watch this happen there. You can see there's the coolest. Now we're coming up accelerating very rapidly. There's probably the peak of the marketplace, the fastest marketplace. Now you're slowing down and starting right about there, you're already hit the summer marketplace because from that previous data point to the current isn't really changing much. And you can see it basically is bouncing from week to week. And that's all it does basically in the summer. So you have this slowdown at the end of the year, a rapid run up in the beginning part of the year. And then you basically play out the rest of the year. But now you're at the current line, the purple line. And again, you can see that that's slightly higher, which is a cooler marketplace than the blue line below it. Now we're looking at the same thing on price reductions. And here you can see that the market a year ago 
was significantly cooler than the market is now. So sellers are taking less price reductions this year on the purple line than they did on the blue line. And then you can see the same pattern. There's the market already accelerating. There's the peak of the marketplace. Very rapidly, it comes back down. And basically from there on, which is uh, August 9th, it's basically bouncing up and down. So real no movement, just fluctuation from week to week without any significant movements. There was probably the peak of the marketplace again. So, you know, from the peak to the valleys, there's a little bit of movement. But overall, there really isn't compared to how much it moves in, a, in the year overall. So, again, the purple is the current data place doing less price reductions than we were a year ago. Here now is flipping over and looking at what the buyers are doing and the amount of overbidding they're doing. You can see the purple line is basically on top of the blue line. And it depends on where you go down here. The blue line is a little bit lower than the purple line. And I guess I could say that all over the vast majority of the graph that the blue line is a little bit lower than the purple. So the market this year is a little bit hotter than normal. And I think that's what my data reflected earlier, hopefully being consistent. So stepping through now, there's the low part in the marketplace. You're already accelerating, accelerating rapidly, big change. There's sort of the peak of the marketplace. Now you're sort of drifting down into the summer. And now you're already at the summer level and just bouncing from week to week to week. with no real change. There's a little bit of bounce, but that's more statistical fluctuation versus really changes in the marketplace. So what you'd expect to have happen now is to repeat what it normally does, which is from the current slide, the purple, I had expected to go down towards the blue and then basically fairly rapidly turn around and go up towards the red. Obviously you don't know how far down towards the blue or how far up to the red it will go. And then I would expect it to come down and settle down at some number reasonable. Now, anything can and does happen in real estate, but that's what I would expect to happen. Now we're looking at the three counties individually, Santa Clara County in the blue, Alameda County in the gray, and San Mateo County in the orange. And you can see the rapid decrease in inventory. You go back and look at the pattern here and you go, it had decreases every year, which is why I do the percent of normal. So you can see if this steepness is steeper or shallower than normal. Same thing with the number of offers. Now it is noteworthy that Santa Clara County is, is having more offers accepted on less inventory than Alameda County. So you would expect Santa Clara County to be a fast paced marketplace and more aggressive. Uh, you may be surprised then to find out that isn't necessarily the case. And then San Mateo County is being much smaller in volume of transactions. And that's because it's a smaller population and a smaller ge geographical area, I believe, and probably fewer homes. So that's why it's down, not because it's a slower marketplace. Here's the speed of the marketplace. Santa Clara County is the fastest and Alameda County is the slowest. And San Mateo County is in between, but you're going from a fast of about 22 days to a slow of 40 days. So basically... And it's interesting that there's two clustered up here at just shy of 40 days. And then you have Santa Clara County, the standout county, doing quite a bit faster. You know, when you're taking the average of maybe 38 and you're down at 22, 22 is quite a bit faster than 38 for go turning over your entire marketplace. Here's marketing time. So in Santa Clara County, you went from a very low DUI, a quick DUI, to a longer marketing time. That would happen if you had very few sellers that aren't successful in selling quickly, where you tend to have these longer numbers up here, like in Alameda County, that would have sellers that are on the marketplace and not selling immediately, having to do price reductions and eventually selling the offer, getting an offer accepted. This is looking at price reductions, that, and so this is simply what the seller does on their own to get before the offer comes in. So they start off with the original ask price and then they reduce it to the list price. So the list price is the ratio of the ask price at the time the offer is accepted back to when they originally offered. And you can see that Alameda County is taking the biggest price reductions followed by San Mateo County and Santa Clara County is taking the least at about three quarters of 1% price reduction. And that's the small because that's everybody. This is the frequency, and so Alameda County is doing the most price reductions at about 23%, and 
and then Santa Clara and San Mateo County are pretty close together at right about 17% on each side of 17% of the sellers are doing a price reduction. Here's the overbidding. So the most overbidding is happening in Alameda County. So even though Alameda County had some of the biggest price reductions and some of the longest marketing times, the buyers are, when they're going in there to actually compete with an offer, they're feeling that the market's the most competitive and overbidding the most at just over 6%. Santa Clara County is next at just over 5% and San Mateo County is just under 5% overbid. And that would be the average overbid. This is the frequency. So how common are those overbids? Most common again in Alameda County, which again, you wouldn't re really expect with the longer marketing times, but basically 68% of the sellers end up getting more than their asking price in Alameda County, 62% in Santa Clara County and about 60.5% in San Mateo County. Here's the long-term appreciation. Santa Clara County had the highest appreciation and take note that this is about 104% appreciation, maybe something like that. And that's going to be significant later because you'll see that each area isn't anywhere close to that level. And here in Alameda County and San Mateo County, they're right on top of each other at about 75% appreciation. And that's since the last nine months of 2015. And you can see I go all the way back to 2014. So my benchmark is right here where prices were very stable. I was looking for the longest period of stable prices I could find. And that was the period that the prices were the most stable. Now what I'm doing is just looking at the sale price and this is on log paper. And I put in the horizontal line so you can see that in San Mateo County, prices are below their 2024 and below their 2022 and even below their 2021 peak and above their 2023 values. You come to Santa Clara County and it's only below their basically their 2024 peak. So we're only lower now than we were at the peak of this year. We're essentially exactly tied to our 2022 peak. So Santa Clara County has done better in the last couple of years as far as the appreciation in San Mateo County, and you can see that. Same with Alameda County, because in Alameda County, it's below their 2024 prices, exactly equal to their 2023 prices, and also below their 2022 price, and exactly equal to their 2021 price. So Alameda County and San Mateo County are very similar Santa Clara County has had a higher rate of appreciation in the last couple of years. Here's the same information on regular paper for those that prefer. And here are the estimated payments that should be in the same order with San Mateo County being the most expensive and Santa Clara second and Alameda County being the more affordable. And again, this is assuming an 80% 30 year fix at the national average rate. And you can do better than that by several methods, including just shopping around. Now we're looking at heat maps. And this is important because the market doesn't go up at the same. Well, in general, you can see the hot parts of the valley. The hottest marketplace right now is the Santa Clara, Willow Glen, Campbell, Cambrian area. The outlying areas are a little bit better on the lack of inventory. And then the peninsula has a lack of inventory, but closer to normal. Here is very stark. This is the number of offers and it's surprising on how blue this is compared to the uh, active inventory. But basically it's showing a lack of offers through the heart of Silicon Valley over on the coast and the Alameda County is doing the best out of all of them. And for Alameda County, it is county-wide data. I don't have the individual micro market areas. This is looking at days unsold inventory. So now you can see where the turnover rate is the highest right through the center part of Silicon Valley, including the expensive areas of Saratoga, Los Gatos, Los Altos, and Palo Alto. You can see that the peninsula, San Mateo County, is quite a bit cooler with the blue, and Alameda County is coming in at basically exactly normal. And at 100.1%, you can't get more normal than that. Now we have micro market data for all the regions, and you can see the slowest area right now is the expensive areas in San Mateo County, Atherton, Portola Valley, Woodside, those kinds of areas. And again, you can see the bulk of the area is red, which means that we we'll just have a fast-paced marketplace. When you're selling out most of your inventory in under two weeks, that's incredible. You know, the slower areas are at 50 days, which, you know, is still a fairly good clip for turning over your entire rate of inventory. This is marketing time. 
this is where it's taking 75 percent of the sellers to sell you can see it's definitely slower down here in south county at 70 days 69 days also 68 days over on the san mateo county coast your hot areas now are cupertino and sunnyvale at 12 days so in Cupertino and Sunnyvale, three quarters of the sellers are selling their house when less than two weeks on the market. Three months also in that same rel relative area at 15 days. So just over two weeks to get your house sold in Fremont area. House price reductions, you can see that the areas that have very few, and it's sort of surprising here seeing the Bay cities uh, having such a low price reductions and they've actually increased their price I'm going to have to investigate that. There's a chance based on the data and my gut feeling that someone's slipped a price through that I didn't catch. There are a fair number of typo errors, and I try to catch them all where someone enters a home in at $100,000 instead of a million. And then, you know, that shows a $900,000 increase. And when you divide it over the limited number of transactions, that impacts the data. You can also see up here in the Hayward area, it's a pretty good clip, but in Hayward, there's a two tenths of a percent price rise. And price increases do happen, you know, like the one tenth percent here in the affordable areas. I wouldn't question that. But when you're seeing four tenths of a percent in a marketplace that's typically slow, that warrants a little bit of investigation. You can see that the San Mateo County coast is on the slow side at 4% price reduction. That's pretty significant. This is the frequency of those price reductions. So over in Half Moon Bay area, you can see the San Mateo County Coast, almost half the sellers are doing price reductions, 43% of the sellers. But then on the flip side, Cupertino and Sunnyvale, only 10% of the sellers are doing any sort of price reductions. So you can see the blue areas are where there's more price reductions, sort of the outlying areas. You know, my sense of the marketplace, and it's hard to do this, is we're already having a re recoil a little bit from people that went out to the remote areas like Livermore. And now they're getting called back into work more often and the commute is dragging them back in. And they're now hoping to focus in on the closer in areas that are maybe a little bit further because they only have to commute three days instead of five. Here's the magnitude of overbidding. And this is the average magnitude of overbidding. So you can see that all the areas are pretty good. You're up here in your Berkeley area, you're in Alameda, you're having the most amount of overbidding at 17%. I'm not seeing any blue. The least color I'm seeing is white. So I'm seeing a two-tenths of a percent price reduction with the offers in expensive areas of San Mateo County and also one percent, one-tenth of one percent in the coast. Everybody else is getting, oh, Pleasanton is two-tenths of a percent negative. Everybody else looks like they're in the positive territory. And in case you haven't paid attention, I have added in the countywide data on the 10, 20, and 30, and Silicon Valley overall data on the 7. So you have the breakdown to see the numbers, and that's going to become important on the slide after this, I think. So this is the frequency of overbidding. Where's overbidding the most common? Right off the bat, it's, well, Foster City, I should be ignoring that. So it's probably down here in Berkeley and the city of Alameda, as well as Hayward. They're basically both at 80%. Uh, the sellers are getting overbid and it's hard to get more than that. And the highest I think I've seen is 95% of the sellers getting more than their asking price. Now, this, in my opinion, is an interesting slide. You can see Silicon Valley as a whole is at 90% appreciation. Santa Clara County is at 102%. But if you look at Santa Clara County micro market areas, the only area that's close is Milpitas and they're at 102 and a half. So they're slightly above. But if you were to look at these rates of appreciation of the micro market areas, it would be like, how do you come up with 102% for the county overall? And you do that because there's been a shift in the marketplace. Instead of homes selling in East San Jose, for example, that's one of the more affordable areas, they're now selling in Campbell. Instead of selling in Milpitas, they're selling in Cupertino. So you've had a slight shift of the marketplace where you're selling a larger percentage of your higher end geographical micro market areas, and that pulls up the median for the county. And that's why it's important to look at the data in the details instead of just looking at countywide or Bay Area wide data. You know, someone here in Santa Clara County might think they're getting 102% appreciation, but they live in Saratoga where they've only seen a 60% appreciation. And that's a 40% swing. That's a fairly significant difference in how much appreciation you got 
And that's why it's important, again, to look at the micro market areas. So the, here, the blue colors are the areas that have performed the least well. The reds are the areas that have performed the most. And you can see the, the red areas are the more outlying areas. I believe, and I should go back and check this, I think Livermore used to be redder. So I think my sense is it was redder and now it's lightening up. So people are moving back, putting pressures on these sort of outlying but close in areas. Here's your sole price, so affordability. So the outlying areas are still more affordable. So is Santa Clara County over uh, San Mateo County. But, you know, to some degree, Redwood City is becoming more affordable. Let's look at that for a second. So Redwood City is right here. So the median price is $1.9 million, and the median price for all of Silicon Valley is $1,650. So, you know, I think that's become a little bit closer to the median for the valley. So it's still above the median. But, you know, if you come into areas in Santa Clara County, it's sort of the same as Campbell, Cambria, and Willow Glen. In fact, those areas are $75,000 or $65,000 more expensive now. That didn't used to be the case. So for people that are looking in the Campbell, Santa Clara area where the market's super heated, may want to jump ship and come up here and look in Redwood City and say, what can I get for my money up in Redwood City? Here's a summary of what we've gone over. You can start over on the left-hand side in the different micro-market areas or over on the right side, either the payments or the purchase price, and then read across the chart and sort of see your market conditions. The yellow highlights tend to be the leading indicators. The orange are lagging indicators because you need to have the sold price. And you can get an idea once you figure out what area you're looking in, you can get a sense for what your market conditions are. How aggressive is overbidding? How quickly is the market going to sell? Things of that nature. Here's a little summary of the data for the last two weeks. Noteworthy, look at how much new listings drop down. We've dropped down basically 18% across Silicon Valley. And if I'm using five weeks worth of data, that means that we basically lost all of six weeks ago and gained almost nothing in this last week. And that's exactly what happens. How many people come on the week before Thanksgiving? Six weeks ago could have been an unusual high number, so it dropped off, and that's why we're having so much. But it's going to be hard when you're using a five-week average to see drops of 20%. At 18%, you're pretty close to it. Number of active listings, that's a little bit more fluctuation because it depends not only on the number of new listings, but the number of listings that are getting sold. So here, the drop-off turns out to be 16% for overall. So again, if it's significant drop, the offer drop was only about 7% overall. And that's because the offers that were accepted this last week are the listings that went on the week before. There's going to be a huge drop off in the number of offers accepted this past week. And that will show up in next week's data because the activity for the week typically happens on the weekend. So and to some degree, I should be looking at this data on Monday, but you can't get the data on Monday because the sales that triggered over the weekend aren't reported until Wednesday and Thursday, and that's why I do the data on the weekend. Your days on sold inventory basically have improved a little bit because it's decreasing a faster paced marketplace. And here's the actual numbers for each one of the three counties and for Silicon Valley overall. This slide is still significant, although less significant. It's simply showing the lack of offers. We've had 1,767 transactions. In the last two years, 2022, it was the record low. 2023 was second lowest year. And then uh, 2007 was the third slowest year. So the, it, this is the third out of the last 10. So there's only been two years that uh, underperformed the current year. So that means seven years did better. And on the 25 year thing, there's only three that are slower than the current year. So that to me, that's still noteworthy. The trans number of transactions has definitely slowed down over the last quarter of a century. We've been talking about the Silicon Valley real estate marketplace. We will be talking about the Greater Bay Area, 13 counties, five regions in a few seconds. This is how you get to the archives of these video presentations. You can type in the longer blue YouTube uh, URL, or you can type in the shorter green root URL, and it will take you to the same place. Saturday morning, 9 a.m., you can join live by typing in the Green Root URL plus 2024. That will be changing to 2025 in January. If you want the handouts, and they are up, type in the Green Root URL, the H, the year, month, and date, 
for example, 2024, 11.30. If you want a specific episode, type in the green root URL plus the year, month, date code without the letter H for the handout above. I'm Richard Calhoun, Creekside Real, working with buyers or sellers here in Silicon Valley. My contact information is there. I appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and like each video you watch. Moving on to the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area includes five regions, 13 counties. They're listed here for you. We've been talking about the Silicon Valley. Then you have the cities, North Bay, Central Valley, and the Central Coast. Here's the data. This is the five different regions. You can see that Silicon Valley has dropped the most on the volume of inventory. You know, both the North Bay and Central Valley have roughly the same inventory and more, but they've dropped off almost nothing. For example, the Central Valley has dropped off 200 listings and the North Bay has dropped off 400 listings. Meanwhile, Silicon Valley with lower listings has dropped off a full thousand. They've lost more than a third of their inventory in just since the beginning of this quarter. If you look at the offers, again, the Silicon Valley has had a significant drop off compared to the other regions. Silicon Valley has lost a little over 400 transactions and the North Bay, the Central Valley have lost almost nothing. The Central Coast has been drifting down. The other, the area that's reached lost the most is the cities and it has lost far less than Silicon Valley. So Silicon Valley is the area that has these huge annual swings that I just talk about so often. If you look at the speed of the marketplace, the cities has dropped by far the most, and that's an improving marketplace. It's turned around in the last week, but that's just probably because of the holiday bounce. Silicon Valley is probably in second place, although it's followed closely by the North Bay and not so closely by the Central Valley. So again, that's one of the values of seeing this data is you can see how the different regions perform. Now we're looking at the marketing time. This is how long is it taking 75% of the sellers to sell. The area that's had the greatest slowdown is the cities. It's gone from basically 32 days up to 52 days. It's almost doubled their time. But that was a short perturbation of a, that, that, that was, you know, the downturn, the improvement in the cities is probably the bigger talk. If you look, look long term in all the regions, they're pretty much just going up. So, so if you look in recent times, Silicon Valley is going up. They're all roughly the same. The one that's sort of going against the trend is the central coast that is actually decreasing, which is reducing the amount of time the sellers are taking to sell their property. If you look at the seller's ask price reductions, the biggest increase in the reductions, which would be a slowing marketplace, is the cities. It's gone from about 1.3% of a price reduction to a full 2% price reductions. I think the next is probably the, uh, the North Bay, which has gone from something like 1.4% price reduction to 2.1%. So again, most of them are a lot more stable than that, including Silicon Valley. If you look at the frequency of price reductions, look at the cities. I mean, it's just on an absolute tear, but again, it had this improvement in the second half of two, uh, third, second half of third quarter that the other regions didn't experience. And if you look at the longer trend, they're all going up. Roughly, you have four regions that are basically at 30 to 36%. So Silicon Valley, with the frequency of price reductions under 20% at about 19%, is by far the most robust area or the area that's having the least price reductions. This is the magnitude of everything. Cities outdoes Silicon Valley by a little bit, but those two are way outperforming at about 6% over the seller's ask price. The next closest is North Bay at something like half of 1%. And then you actually have the Central Valley and the Central Coast, both below the seller's asking price. So when offers are coming in, buyers are actually negotiating downwards, which is something we don't see that often in Silicon Valley. Frequency of overbidding, most common in Silicon Valley, followed closely by the cities, then a fairly significant jump. And then you have the North Bay, Central Valley, and the Central Coast, all between basically 40 and 30% of the sellers getting more than their asking price. This is long-term appreciation. You have three areas that are very close together up here. You got the uh, Central Valley, the Central Coast, and Silicon Valley are very close together. North Bay, and that's at about 190%. North Bay is at 140%. And then you have the cities lagging behind it, only 40% appreciation. 
here's the Greater Bay Area sold price. You, you got Silicon Valley and the cities close together. Now you got to remember these are the regions. So I, I don't know. I would assume it's San Francisco that's pulling down Marin, and it's Alameda County that's pulling down Silicon Valley. But the two regions are coming in together at about one million six hundred fifty thousand for their median sold price. Then you jump all the way down to the Central Coast at about eleven fifty, the North Bay at about eight hundred, and the Central Valley is the most affordable, about five hundred fifty thousand for their median sold price. This is the payments. It's going to be in the same order because I'm assuming a thirty-year fixed. I'm using an estimate for property tax and homeowners insurance. Here's the actual data across the top is the different metrics down the side of the different counties, all 13 of them. I also have Silicon Valley since that's the focus of the talk. And then I also have the Bay Area only because it's in the media so much. I think that it's really irrelevant. If you come over and look at the appreciation at 182%, you know, if you're trying to judge the marketplace, look at Silicon, Santa Clara County at 202% all the way down to a low of San Francisco of only 31%. So one number cannot describe the marketplace, even if you're only looking at the nine counties.